Well, good morning to Cumber Baptist Church and all who may be listening to this online broadcast. We're delighted to welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we trust that you're staying safe, that you're taking care, and that you're keeping in step with the government's guidelines. These are different days. These are difficult days for many people, and it's so easy to become despairing and despondent. But thank God there is one who knows the end from the beginning, one who is from everlasting to everlasting, our great God and loving Heavenly Father. And it's to him we look, and it's in him we trust. So let's hear his word today on this, the Lord's Day. We read some verses from Psalm 98. The psalmist says, O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praise. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer on this, the morning of your own day. We thank you that we can bow with confidence in your presence because we come not through any merit of our own, but only through the merit of our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice at the place called Calvary. We thank you for that new and living way that you have opened unto us, that we who once were far from God can draw near and with confidence call upon your name and call you our Heavenly Father. We just ask for your blessing to be upon us as we worship you today, as we read your word, and as we consider the things that you have revealed them in. We thank you for the word of God that has already gone forth to our boys and girls from Henry. And we thank you for your word that will be preached throughout our island home today, across our nation and further afield. That word that lives and abides forever. That word that is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Lord, bless your word today. Bless us as we meet together in your presence, in our homes, and yet together through this means of communication. Lord, as we seek to draw near to you today, may we know the living God drawing near to us and ministering to our needs we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Could I invite you to open your Bibles, if you have one there, at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. And we're going to read some verses from the 8th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew. Beginning our reading at verse 23. Matthew chapter 8, commencing to read at verse 23. This is the word of the Lord. And when he, that is the Lord Jesus, got into the boat, his fishermen, or his disciples, followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. And they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? O you of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God for his word. Thus, Sunday morning we commenced a little series of studies entitled Focus on Faith. We were reminded from the writings in the Hebrew letter that without faith it is impossible to please God. 
For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards them who seek him. Paul writing in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 reminds us that faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. Often we have sung that little chorus, faith is just believing what God says he will do. He will fail his, us never. His promises are true. And last week we focused our attention on the sixth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, and in particular verse 30 where we read, But of God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? And we discovered that this little phrase, O you of little faith, is associated in Matthew 6 and 30 with an anxiety that is prevalent among God's people. And it will make us fretful. And of course that anxiety is worry. We looked at this chapter and we discovered that worry is fruitless. It doesn't add a single hour to anyone's life. In fact, it can make things worse rather than better. Worry is faithless. The worrier is someone whose faith is small. According to the teaching of the Lord Jesus, the disciples were weak in their trust toward God. They were not reflecting on God's uh, promises and on God's faithfulness. Worry is fruitless. Worry is faithless. And worry is fatherless. And Jesus understands that an orphaned world without God and hope scurries around in fits of anxiety, worrying about all kinds of stuff. He doesn't understand the anxiety of those whom God has brought into his family by grace, those who have heavenly Father who cares for them. It was Curry Ten Boone who said, Worry is carrying tomorrow's load with today's strength, carrying two days at once. It's moving tomorrow ahead of its time. Worry, she said, does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Are you worried? A lady visited the doctor and told him that she was feeling rather run down. As far as she could tell, her get up and go had got up and gone. After examining uh, the, uh, his patient, the doctor replied, Madam, it's my expert opinion that you're not all run down, but you're all wound up. Isn't it so easy for you and me, and especially in these days, to become all wound up? Paul writes in Philippians 4, he says, Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep, will guard, will guard us in your hearts and minds, in the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And Paul is simply teaching these believers at Philippi how to apply their faith. Haven't you sung it? Do you know it? All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat, leave it there. Never a burden he cannot bear. Never a friend like Jesus. This morning we read from Matthew chapter 8. And in Matthew chapter 8, the Lord Jesus asked this question to his disciples. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Well, if little faith in Matthew 6 is associated with an anxiety that is prevalent among God's people, namely worry, which makes us fretful. In Matthew chapter 8, it's associated with an activity that is painful among God's people, making us fearful. If you look at the context of this verse, you will see very clearly that it's associated with testing circumstances. The disciples were caught in a storm, a common occurrence on Lake Galilee. 
A storm that whips the waves into a frenzy and the disciples couldn't cope. The high winds were tossing their little boat and the strong waves were threatening to sink them and no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't get the water out quick enough. They had Jesus on board, but he was asleep. And they were at which end corner? They were agitated. They were alarmed. They were frantic. They were panicking. They had faith, but they were not applying their faith. Yes, we see the waves. Yes, we feel the wind. But we have Jesus on board. Are we going to perish when the master of the winds and the waves is on board? Is there anything that he cannot do? After all, we have witnessed him turning water into wine. We have seen him giving sight to the blind. We have been there when he even raised the dead. Does he not love us? Does he not care for us? Has he not promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us? Doesn't our Father in Heaven know what we need? You see, this is how we apply our faith. The disciples went to Jesus in a panic, but ultimately they went to him, and he rebuked the winds and the waves, and there was a great calm. And a great crisis was replaced with a great calm. Will you notice that these disciples were in this boat because they were following Jesus? Jesus had directed them into the boat. Jesus had led them into the boat. But being in the presence of Jesus... And being obedient to the word of Jesus and being in the will of Jesus does not make us exempt from the storms of life. Never think that if you become a Christian, that it's farewell trial, farewell trouble, farewell tears, farewell tragedy, farewell turmoil. Being a Christian does not exclude us from the storms and the difficulties of life. There are Christians suffering from this virus as well as non-Christians. There are those who know and love the Lord and are walking in fellowship with the Lord and they are in the midst of the storm. You see, a decision that leads us in the direction in which Christ wants us to go will not eliminate us from the storms of life. Notice their dilemma. They were in a storm, a storm that can break out so quickly and unexpectedly. And remember this, remember this morning, this is your dilemma. You're in a storm. You're in a storm regarding your own health. You're in a storm regarding the circumstances that prevail within your family circle. You're in a storm this morning that only you and God know about. And the difficulties difficulty seem to be like mountains, unsurmountable. And it seems that you're going to be overcome by the storm. But not only do I want you to see their decision and their direction and their dilemma, I want you to notice their discovery this morning. They discovered in the Lord Jesus the Christ of every crisis. They discovered in the Lord Jesus one who was able to calm the storm and to still the sea. Fancy going to pieces when the master of the winds and the waves and every storm is on board. But that can happen when we don't apply our faith. A few Tuesday nights ago, we concentrated our thoughts on that phrase in Psalm 46, be still and know that I I'm God. Is that what God is saying to you this morning? In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the crisis, in, in the midst of the difficulties, be still and know 
that I am God. In spite of what we see, in spite of what we sense, in spite of how we feel, he is the sovereign God who is in control of every situation will make us fretful. Here in Matthew chapter 8, we're discovering that little faith will make us uh, fearful. How we need to allow God's word to saturate our hearts and our souls and our minds. How we need to realize from this incident recorded for us in the gospel that God in his son Jesus Christ is sufficient for every crisis. He is the God who can calm the storm. He is the God who can still the sea. The little chorus puts it like this. God, any rivers think Archibald. God, any you can't talk to. God specializes in things on the pole. He can just what the other can do. Well, let's again focus our eyes on Jesus this morning. Let's see a Christ of every Christ. Let's be mindful that nothing catches him out. Nothing takes place out of his sovereign and permissive will. He knows, he knows. The storms that would make waves, he knows, he knows, and tempers every wind that blows. Read God's word today. Allow God's word to penetrate your heart and your soul and your mind. And whatever the storm may be in your life, realize that in Jesus Christ, you have a Savior who is sufficient to restore. You remember that little chorus maybe on the school? It's a long time since you've thought about it. It's a long time since you've sung it. But in the hell, you cry than to be without him in the camp. Maybe this morning you were listening to this broadcast and you've never trusted Christ. Maybe you've been brought up in the faith. You've learned gospel story. Maybe you've never heard it before. The story of God's amazing grace. The story of God's great love. That God so loved the world. And that means you. That means me. That he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him, whoever receives him, whoever trusts him, whoever depends upon him for pardon and peace in heaven, he will have our last life. I trust him and say, the only one who is such a storm, the God is the storm of death, leaving this world to go into eternity. But even in that storm, we can know the peace and the presence of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Oh, today, if you have never trusted in Christ, if you have never acknowledged your need of a Saviour, bow beneath the shadow of the cross, realize that on Calvary, Jesus died for sinners. That you're a sinner, and I'm a sinner. And that means Jesus died for me. Jesus died for you, but in him you can find life, life for the issues of us in heaven. Don't be anxious. Be fearful today. Don't be fearful. In the storm, never. But remember, Jesus can be with us in the storm, and he can calm the storm, and he can still the sea. They ask the question, what sort of man is this. Another translation puts it like this. What manner of man is this? Well, of course, he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is able to do more than we can ask or even think. May God bless his word to your hearts today. Let's pray now. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for every promise in your word that tells us about your greatness, your power, your might. 
We thank you for every promise that underlines and emphasizes the goodness and the kindness and the faithfulness of God our Father in heaven. We thank you for the blessing that comes when we know that all our sins are forgiven because of what Jesus Christ accomplished through his death on the cross. And when we come to him and acknowledge our need of him and turn away from our sins, repent of our sins, and ask him to forgive us, he is willing and he is able to forgive. We thank you for the promise of your presence. We thank you that we can experience a peace that passes all understanding. And we can rest in this unshakable truth that our Lord Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever storm we may be in today, help us just to look to you and trust in you and prove your strength and your grace to be absolutely sufficient. Hear our prayer. Bless your word to our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to remember the Lord Jesus in the breaking of bread, we are reminded in Holy Scripture of the greatest storm that one could ever experience. The storm that took place at Calvary when Jesus bore the wrath of God on our behalf. The old hymn was like this, the wrath of God that was my due upon the Lamb was led, but by the shedding of his blood the debt for me was paid. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, For our sake he made him, that is the Lord Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You see, the only righteousness that fits us for heaven is a righteousness that is found outside of ourselves, a righteousness that comes through Christ, a righteousness that is found only in Christ. We sing those words, Jesus, thy blood and righteousness, Thy beauty are my glorious dress. Midst flaming worlds, in these array, with joy shall I lift up my head. But as we come to celebrate the Lord's death, in a moment we shall eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And in doing so, we shall remind ourselves of what it cost the Lord Jesus to take away our sin. To what it meant for him to be sin for us, to go to Calvary and to bear the full weight of God's wrath so that we might be forgiven, so that we might be brought into the family of God, so that we might be reconciled to God and know his presence and his peace and rest of the promise that he gave to his own, that I will come again and receive you unto myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And we eat this bread and drink this cup this morning, not in order to be saved. We don't do this to try and get favor with God. We do this because we are already in favor with God through the grace of God. We do this not in order to become Christians. We do this because we are Christians. And in eating of the bread and Think of the cup. We are confessing that Jesus Christ is our Savior, our Lord, our Redeemer, our friend. That he is the one who died for us. That he is the one who has provided the salvation that we need. And so if you know and love the Lord this morning, you eat of the bread and give thanks. Drink of the cup and give thanks. Let's thank the Lord for his death. And then we will eat of the bread. Father, we thank you for the place called Calvary. We thank you for your son who became sin for us, the one who knew no sin, 
so that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And O God, as we partake of this bread now, help us to do so with thankful hearts. Help us to do so with trusting hearts. Help us again today to confess that Jesus Christ is our Savior. That we are depending not on ourselves or anyone else other than Jesus Christ and Christ alone for our salvation. Amen. In the same night in which the Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he prayed and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, we thank you for the cup, the cup that symbolizes the outpouring of the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. We thank you for its cleansing power. We thank you that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all our sin. We ask now that as we drink of this cup, we may do so with a deep sense of appreciation and utter dependence upon the shed blood of the Lord Jesus, upon the sacrifice that he offered himself to God for our sins. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. In the same manner also he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he thanked him. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. And we know that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Let's drink. Let's pray together. Oh God, we come to the close of our time together. We thank you for your help. We thank you for a sense of your presence. We thank you that you are the God who hears and answers our prayers. We thank you for answered prayers since last we met together in this way. We thank you for many who have experienced the healing hand of God upon them. And we pray for those who continue to struggle with this virus. We continue to call upon your name and ask for your intervention and your healing for our land and our nation and our world. We continue to pray for our NHS and others who are seeking to care for so many who are affected by COVID-19. We pray that they may be protected from this virus. We remember families who have been devastated through the loss of loved ones. For funerals and, and burials that have taken place in this last week in very difficult and trying and different circumstances of the world. God bless them. For those who have been allowed to visit graves, we pray that that may be a means of comfort to them. But above all, may they turn to Christ and in the midst of death and sorrow find hope in God. Find in the living Lord Jesus an assurance, a peace, a strength that's beyond all others. 
Remember again our church family in Cumber and all who listen to this podcast. God bless them today. And encourage them and strengthen them in the Lord. For the sick and the vulnerable, you know who they are, Lord. We commit them all to you for those who are isolated, for those who are struggling with pain and physical weakness. God bless them today. Remember again our young families in the church and those who are being schooled at home. We pray that you will just be with them. Young people today who are doing exams online because of the situation that they're facing, God help them. Our own families, we pray that God will strengthen those who are the Lord. That God will bring to faith those who as yet have not trusted Christ. That in the midst of all that is taking place, they will hear the voice of God through the word of God and respond to the love of God. Remember again the ongoing ministry of UCB prayer life. We pray that that may be a means of strengthening those who will call in as they share their problems and as they're prayed for. Lord, you know what will take place in the coming days. We rest in the knowledge that you know all things. And we just pray that you'll protect us. We pray that you'll preserve us from danger seen and unseen. We pray that you'll help us to hide your word in our hearts. And to think again of the Christ of every crisis. And of the Savior who is sufficient for every storm of life. Lord, we pray that your grace, your mercy and your peace will rest upon us and upon all whom we love this day and in this incoming week. For Jesus' sake. Amen. If you keep in mind our Tuesday evening online broadcast. And as we come to the close now, we're going to be listening to two songs. One is a song that is associated with the DB. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? The other one, the very older song for some, but very meaningful words. If I'm Jesus, Jesus only. Thank you for listening in. God bless you. And the Lord be with you. Till we meet again. Amen. <laughs>